As the baby boomer generation ages, more middle-aged Americans face the prospect of caring for their parents. Today, 54 million Americans are involved in the care of their loved ones. What do we need to know? Next on Living Smart. Hello, I'm Patricia Grass. Welcome to Living Smart, the show designed to help you get the most out of life. Our guest today, Senior Guidance Director Adele Grody, will guide us through the maze we call caregiving. Today, more than 54 million American families care for elderly loved ones. Adele will give us advice, inspiration, and help so we can do it well. As you know, we decided that our WOW meeting for this month would be about caregiving and how we care for our parents. So These women have been close friends for years. Session, they call themselves the WOW group, women of wonder that is, and have been meeting once a month for nine years. We all met each other through our work as volunteers at the Senior Guidance Directory. And so we've shared in common a lot of laughs and a lot of tears in working on a helpline to answer seniors' questions and in putting the actual production of the book together. Care meaning compassion for the C. Uh, a is awareness. R is respect. And uh, E is empowerment. Adele Gordy is their fearless leader and the new executive director of the book that is like no other in the country. The Senior Guidance Directory provides vital information for seniors, their families, and caregivers about services available in the community to help them with whatever their needs might be. In just 12 years, the book, which is free for seniors and funded through donations, has gone from 70 to 200 pages. It has an expanded index and larger print. Raised in a big Italian-American family in New York, Adele learned as a child how to respect and care for family elders. My mom was a very young mother. At 22, she had already three children, and she had to take care of my grandmother, of Nani Jen. She was blind, and she was diabetic. And my mom would take my two little brothers in the carriage. I was by her side, and we'd walk about two or three blocks around the corner where Nani Jen lived. Why did the gals refer to your mother as a postman? Because rain, sleet, sun, sh whatever, she was out there taking care of her mother every day. As a teen, Adele followed in her mother's footsteps and worked with the most vulnerable seniors, the blind, the mentally ill, and the ones who had just lost a spouse. What I learned is how lonely they are. What I learned is that even when we think we're helping seniors, they can never get enough attention because we're human till the moment we die. And that having a face smile at you, having somebody touch you, it's like a baby. You respond. Sometimes she says she found the work depressing, but always life-affirming. So I think watching my mother taught me that with the right attitude, you can do just about anything. This lesson served her well in life. Her first major job was working on a deep-sea drilling ship. One of very few women on a ship with um, 70 men, all of whom were in control. And, and they expected the women to do absolutely everything they did. One of the able-bodied seamen said, you, go get me a left-handed screwdriver. There was no such thing on the ship. But she did meet her husband there and went on to run her own natural gas distribution company. She not only had fun and a few kicks there, she also made enough money to retire early. Senior Guidance Directory, how may I help you? When she began to volunteer well, at the I'm Houston so Forum Senior Guidance follow. Program and worked on the helpline, she began to hear horror stories on elderly abuse. This changed her life. The helpline attracted seniors or their caregivers who were desperately needing information or assistance. For example, a senior is living on a limited income. Somebody called the other day. They were looking for Medicaid transportation. It's people who have no money. It's people who are getting dunning letters from the utility company who need money to pay the gas bill because they chose to pay the rent. They would need the Medicaid non-emergency transportation number if they need transportation to their health care services. We had a really full day on the 13th. Under her guidance as executive director of the Senior Guidance Book, distribution has increased to over 200,000 guides. 
And each year, hundreds of volunteers pick up the guide to help thousands of seniors and caregivers who need them. The plan now is to provide the book nationwide if she can get the funding. We provide access to information that helps people from all walks of life. We don't focus on one economic tier. We have services that are about people, not about how much money you can afford to spend. Thank you so oh, thank you much. Really much. appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Recently, Adele became a certified senior advisor, and this changed her own perspective on aging. What I do know is that I've had a big wake-up call to take better care of myself, to keep my mind active, to establish relationships now that will last through the future. <laughs> it's your birthday. And she's doing just that with her Women's WOW group. Today is another day to celebrate life and care for the caregivers. Dear God, I pray for caregivers for they are your love in action supporting others along their way to healing and renewal of mind and body. Thank you so much for joining us, Adele. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Now, caregiving is particularly a very important issue for Americans. Why is that? Well, caregiving, Patty, affects all Americans at one point or another, and I think former First Lady Rosalind Carter uh, said it well. She said, caregivers are people who have experienced the need for caregiving. They are people who are caregivers. They are people who are um, going to be caregivers, and they are people who are going to need caregivers. And so when we look at it in that way, we can see how, you know, it's inevitable at some point it will affect our lives. Now, later on we'll talk about, in the program, we'll talk about what are the most important things to do with caregiving, but what is the first step once you become a caregiver? What is the first step you need to take? In my experience, the first thing you need to do is recognize what your responsibilities are. And that's going to be a function of the, the unique needs of your family and your unique resources. Um, education, I would stress, now is the time to start learning about what is caregiving, what does it mean to me, how do I get involved? Mm -hmm. How do I understand it better? And how and when should you have the conversations you need to have with the person you're going to take care of, with your family members? When do you have these conversations? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's Even when you're a teenager. <laughs> okay. It, there are some teenagers who are caregivers, actually, and that's a growing trend in our country as well. Um, yesterday, because it's never too late to plan Okay. And we never know how we're going to get hit by caregiving needs. So I encourage all families to start making this a part of life, okay. it, not to put it uh, under a carpet, not to hide it, not to avoid the subject. As we get older, we need to start addressing a new stage in life. And because longevity statistics have us all living longer, um, we need to be prepared for that. And without a plan in place that incorporates all of the aspects of caregiving, our lives become very, very challenging and more difficult than necessary. Let's talk about um the questions you need to ask, is there like a comprehensive worksheet where you can get the right questions to ask? And, you know, you have a family dinner and these are the questions you need to get answered. Where do you find what those questions are? Well, you can do a lot of searching on the Internet now. It, there's a phenomenal amount of caregiving information available. But I do recommend one particular book that I found to be better than any other book, and it's called The And Thou Shalt Honor um, a Caregiver's Companion. And that book, in, if you just Google the name of that book, you'll get to the website, or you can order it on Amazon or something. Whatever, but it, th there's a lot of information on the, to find the right question to ask. The when you have those conversations with somebody, you may have to care for. Those worksheets are beautifully designed. And, it, and I think it would, it's, a, it's a great conversation to have anyway to bond with your family, right? Oh, it brings out lots <clears throat> of interesting questions. <laughs> what are some of the common mistakes people make when it comes to caregiving? I think the most common mistake is they totally underestimate financial costs mm -hmm. and the emotional costs and the time costs associated with it. Okay. So money is a big issue. 
People well, assume the money's going to be there, and sometimes it's not because it's extremely expensive exactly. sometimes to care for the elderly. Now, what is the most important question you needed to ask, the first question you need to ask the person that you're taking care of? What do you envision for yourself in your old age, and what do you want and what don't you want? What are your preferences? Every spirit, every soul of a person has an image of what their old age is like, what they want to deal with, what they don't want to deal with. And um, sometimes families lose track of that and want to take control. They want to help, but they never stop and ask that older loved one, well, what do you want? What do you want? That's yeah. the question. And what, what do, do you, you want? need? And, and can you give me some examples of that? I mean... Uh, I think it's uh, very simply, you can make the assumption that, well... I see that you're having difficulty getting dressed. Mm -hmm. And so we need to get someone in the house to help you, Mama. Well, maybe that's not what they need. Maybe all they need is to wear some different kind of clothing because it makes it easier for them to get dressed. Mm -hmm. We are viewing our older loved one's uh, situation from a younger person's eyes. Right. And, and, for example, if they take too long to get dressed, you think, oh, well, they need somebody to dress. Well, maybe they just need they to just... take longer because they're older, right? Exactly. Documents, end-of-life issues, what are the important documents you need to know about uh, when it comes to end-of-life issues? There are two separate uh, issues here. You have health-related documents, and those would be an, um, your out-of-hospital do-not-resuscitate orders, okay. your medical um, health care proxy and living will. And then you have the financial instruments, and those would be the power of attorney and your last will and testament. Okay, so those are really important things to, to take care of before the person gets sick. Yes, in fact, I just read a statistic that in this country, only 50% or roughly 50% of the people who are age 50 and older have those documents in place, and you really need to have them in place. Now, the financial documents are particularly important because... Would you say most people don't understand how expensive long-term care is? Give me some ideas of how expensive it is. And is it a good idea to get long-term care insurance and when and what? Okay. Long-term care insurance is a very important component of the whole financial situation. And, of course, everyone's situation is different. I look at it in terms of uh, do you want to make a big mistake or a little mistake? <laughs> the little mistake is if you buy long-term care insurance and you never use it, um, you've maybe spent $3,000 a year over 10 years, so you've invested $30,000 that you didn't get to use. Okay. Um, that's a little mistake. The big mistake is if you don't have long-term care insurance and you need it, you will start spending upwards of $50,000 a year out of your retirement funds. And so this is catastrophic to many families. In particular, if one person needs the care and then dies, they've used up the family's assets, then the surviving spouse may not have funds for their needs as their time goes on. That doesn't mean long-term care insurance is for everyone. What's important is to understand your financial situation today and to start talking with professionals about how to plan for your future, to get an elder care attorney involved, to help you set up an estate plan, to help you have your advanced directives in place, to discuss the issues of long-term care insurance, what you can afford, what types of policies are more appropriate for your situation, um, and then to sort of create um, an awareness that you have another 20 years to live. It's like when, when we were kids and we were 20 and just out of school or just out of high school and you've got your whole life ahead of you, we have all kinds of plans. Mm -hmm. You can't wait to do it. Once you hit a certain age, when we, in our 50s, we start thinking about retirement, but nobody wants to talk about that, you know, that term of the aging. Last the last 10 years of your life. Exactly, and you don't know when those last 10 years are, and because of uh, our situation in this country and the life statistics, your last 10 years could be between 90 and 100. <laughs> and you better, you've got to start planning for that today. Oh, geez. So maybe <laughs> at age 50 is when you should visit your elder care lawyer, right? Absolutely. And there is such that specialty. So that's a, that's a good person to visit if you care about these issues. Yes, they're very important. Um, now, how do you find reliable long-term care? I mean, how, where do you go? Where do you turn? There's so many people out there that are not doing a good job. Well... I'd say there are, you're right, 
there are also a lot of people who that are, are doing, a, doing great a good job. That's what we need to find. Yes, and here's how you find them. Uh, just like you went out and you found your own, your first home or your first apartment, you investigated the market, you right. looked at things. You have to be your own best shopper. There are many different types of uh, senior housing communities today that are available that there are continuity of care communities where you can start off in independent living and if you need care as you age, you can automatically go into their assisted living community. If you become ill or your spouse becomes ill, you can have them move into nursing care, mm -hmm. but you're still on the same campus. That's one way to look at a senior housing community. Alternatively, you can just have assisted living or you could just have independent living. So they, in the greater Houston area, there are many different styles of housing, as is the trend throughout the country. Right. The trend is away from institutionalization, correct? Correct. Why is that? It's more expensive. People don't like it as much. Why? I think it's both of those things. It's also one ages better when we can age in place in our own home. And studies have shown now that we are better aging uh, in a community, in a family environment. Right, right. In fact, if we don't have families, we can move into specialized housing communities that are structured like family environments. And that seems to work best. That's right. No one wants to die alone. Right. And I think we're moving in that direction where, where people are going to communities, even creating communities so that they can age in within a community. Absolutely. Um, you know, here in Houston, we have the Senior Guidance Directory, uh, which is very well done, as, as we saw in the story. But there's also a number that people can call even nationally. Tell me about the 211 number and why, what you can get when you call this number. I'm so glad you asked that question. 211 is now known nationwide as the abbreviated telephone number to find community information and resources in virtually every state in the country. Texas has adopted 211 um, for this reason. And especially in the greater Houston area, 211 has a special... Um, extra component called the Elder Access Network. And this is now behind the scenes of 211. When you call, you can be connected to an elder care specialist. So the theory is we have all seniors, family members, and caregivers dialing one phone number. And then from there, it's like spokes in a wheel. Your call gets directed to the most appropriate resource to assist you. And we have a few spokes already set in this infrastructure. And this program is being um, supported through Care for Elders and the United Way. And I, I believe that it's uh, definitely the way of the future. Now, also, almost every city in the country has an area agency, right, or agency on aging. Yes. And you can get also this type of information there, and it's a trustworthy information. It's a government um, organization, right? Yes. Through the um, Older Americans Act, there are area agencies of aging funded in every major metropolitan area throughout the country. I believe there are over 680 such agencies. And in wherever you live, uh, one of the first calls you should make if your caregiver is to the local area agency on aging and ask to speak to one of their benefits counselors. <laughs> Online you can also go to the elder care locator and then that can direct that you can to that you. number as well for your area. You talked about in the story about uh, so many elders who, elderly who do not have funds, who are quite poor. Um, are there services for people who don't have the money to care for themselves or don't, don't have family? Um, What's out there for them? Most cities have infrastructures for low-income subsidized services, whether it's housing, um, Meals on Wheels, for example, transportation services. Medicaid, of course, has um, a very particular focus in serving the lower-income people. And um, we have to learn as a community to take advantage of these resources, to learn about them, so that if you have, it may be your family, it may be uh, someone in your family, a distant relative, a current relative, a neighbor, a friend, they need to understand that these are resources available to them and that is why uh, a one-stop shop, whether it's the Senior Guidance Directory or 211 
or the Area Agency on Aging Benefits Counselors. These are people who are trained to help, to help you focus you. and yeah. learn about right. those Be programs. Because everybody has a different problem or a different challenge. Not everybody's the same. So um, tell me about the, the pros and cons of the geriatric, something that's kind of new, geriatric care managers. It seems to be a new profession mm -hmm. now. A geriatric care manager is a relatively new profession, and typically it's um, someone who's either a counselor, a social worker, um, an elder care professional, perhaps a nurse. And I look at them as being the traffic director and the coordinators of your plan of action. And they are people who know the community you live in, who understand the resources, and who can listen to your particular and unique needs and that of your loved one and put the two of you together and say, let's assess the situation. Let's determine what are the best next steps. Let's put a plan into place. Let's um, make it actionable. Let's make it someone accountable to it. So a geriatric care manager is a very special person who needs to be aware of what your needs are. And you need to find out what their references are, uh, get word of mouth, make sure they're credentialed. They, they don't necessarily have to be licensed in, uh, I know in Texas there is no such license, but in other states there may be. But they're an important component, in particular if you're caring for a loved one at a distance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's very important. Or you may come from a family that is very busy and you cannot take time off from work. And you have, especially if you have care in the home, you want someone, another set of eyes on what's happening. Now, we know that there's a lot of depression in the elderly, but there's also depression in people who care for others because the, the stress, they, they're caught between having to go to work and taking care of the family and taking care of an elderly. Generally, they're sandwiched. Um, is there such thing as services for people who are caregivers? Yes, there are a number of services caregivers can take advantage of. Um, one is a respite service, and respite is when uh, someone comes to your home mm -hmm. and takes care of your loved one while you can go out and um, have a break from your caregiving duties. Alternatively, there are adult daycare centers, or some of these senior communities will allow you to bring your loved one to their facility for a day. Uh, so that you can go out and do the things that you need to do. Maybe you have to go to a doctor's appointment, or maybe you just want to go out and play poker with the guys. It's not just women, although right, right. the majority of caregivers are women. The men are actively involved in this, too. And the, so not having an opportunity to have some of your own personal time is very wearing on caregivers. Uh, there could be more support services, and some communities have more than others. Right. Uh, that's an important component for caregivers. If you as a caregiver try to get help uh, to, to do your job as a caregiver, what do you need to know? Uh, by help, do you mean try to get help we'll as hire other people? Hire to other help people? You, right. Well, first of all, you want to go to a reliable agency, preferably one that's been in existence for some time, that has a track record. That's not to say that new agencies wouldn't be good, but it's, you know, buyer beware, caveat emptor. You, you are hiring a stranger to come into your home. Uh, fortunately, in Texas now, they have to, criminal checks are done on all home health care workers. You, you must learn about these people, what their training is. Some of them are specialized in specific kinds of caregiving. Some are licensed, some are not. I want to say, though, that I learned this from my recent experience with my own mother. Uh, direct, care, direct care workers, most of them are very special human beings. Mm -hmm. They take on responsibilities and duties that um, you have to have a special kind of heart to do. They are compassionate, they are patient, um, and they're the ones who are taking care of your loved one in your absence. Don't ever forget to thank them right, for the right. work they do. Now, what do you think are the most important things people do not know about caregiving, that they never think about it, it just hits them real hard? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a big piece is you never know just how complex a what appears to be a simple situation might be. Older adults face multiple 
problems. They have multiple needs. It's not like you can come in and fix one thing. And you may not be or the personality type or have the training to even know what to look for. So one of the most difficult things as a caregiver, and that's going back to that education component, is learn, learn, learn about it. It's going to touch you, touch your family. There's lots of information out there. And, and it's just like learning anything new. Once you know it, it's like, oh, that makes so much sense now. How do you know you're living smart? You know you're living smart when you have a plan of action with your family that uh, has introduced all of you to the stark reality that we're aging and we're aging together and we need to do this as a group if possible. You're aging smart when you have some goals and objectives and you've taken action on that plan and you're now able to act as an advocate and collaborate with your loved one to create a better life for them. Thank you so much, Del Grody. It's great having you. Thank you so much, To learn more about this topic, go to our website. There you'll also find a complete resource list. You can also email us or call us with your comments at 713-743-8513. And that's our show for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to live smart. I'm Patricia Gross. Have a healthy week. For a transcript of this program, send 695 to the address on your screen. Please include the name of the guest.